in the FOI. And, and, and the, after four weeks of training, you get out and you specialize in certain certain fields. And that's what I I eventually came back to California. Uh, my, see, I had a family. I didn't tell you about that. I had a family. <laughs> I had a family, but they didn't accept Islam. You know, I'll, I'll put it this way. We, we, uh, we parted before I came. And in fact, that was another reason why I came to Islam. Because uh, my family is split up. I had children. So I told Mr. Farrakhan one day in the restaurant, I was going back to California. And he said, why are you going back to California? I said, because I I got, I got to take care of my children. He said, uh, uh, well, when you came here, you didn't have anything to take care of your children. What do you have now? Well, I got to teach you. I got this. He said, well, well, how are you going to use that to sustain taking care of your family? So, he made you think, you know. <laughs> so I said, uh, I said, well, I got a brother, brother, my children back there. He said, holy, he said, they're not your children. I said, yes, sir. They're my children. He said, no, sir. They're not your children. He said, they're our lost children. And he just used you to produce them. He said, he said, how long have you been here? I said, quite a while. He said, he said who's been taking care of my you here? Somebody would take care of my year. So, <laughs> so how they Allah, they are lost children, he'll find a way to take care of them. Okay. But they're not yours. They belong to Allah. <laughs> and I learned a lot from that statement. The lots of us make a mistake to think that they're our children and if and we want to possess them as that control them that the way but to let them go. And that, let them be themselves and a law direct them. And that but that's that would cause some of the problems we have today because we kind of the family the, the parents keep the children on close leash because they don't understand the, the broadness of how to do that because that's what happened to them. So it's the same process going on and on until at one point in time we gotta let the children go at a certain age and let them go. And uh, that's, that's the stage that we are now with Minister Parker and he's letting her, like yourself and other the youth, they have to have the opportunity to go. So that's what happened. I came back to California, came with the first officer training camp the Grill, and we started uh, trailblazing all up and down the coast, all over, over the little miles and, and uh, different areas and uh, did that. And um, in the process, one of the things we did, let me let you answer the other question because I'll be going over there with this. Yes, sir. I'm going to press the beat to a lot, bro. You could have kept going. I'm not <laughs> um, I guess the question I'll throw out there now is pertaining to, I mean, I like that last statement. One thing you mentioned when you said that you met the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I guess for the second time, you said verb, you know, a verbal conversation, it, went, it, it brought it down. And you said, one of the things you want to do is, how can I take this word and put it into action? Okay. Now, listening to you taking on different polls in Boston and the different things you was doing about pushing your 270 papers, trying to get your 300, um, staying with the, in the FY house, going around with your brother, learning more about the brothers and setting up the structure and organizing things there, as well as doing the trailblazing work with Brother Jibril on the West Coast. You have, you know, I wonder like, what's your level of satisfaction being able to help build from that point to being able to help build now? I mean, what have, you know, what kind of experiences, what other experience are you going through? What do you see now that you can contribute to or advice you will give to any other brothers and sisters who are working now to help build the nation? What advice do you have for them? Uh, let me see if I can put it in a sort of synchronized way of presenting it. I've been jumping back and forth with different things uh, that may 
I'm missing some things that may I may take for granted. It may, may, may help somebody else. It's just by knowing those little things uh, that uh, we've all we, we experienced. And one is uh, coming back to uh, California, Brother Durrell. I asked him the same questions that I asked him when I was in Boston. What is it we can do other than just be an FOI? This do this, you know, say, so, because I'm the, so I'm the first officer, I train all the men, do, do the martial arts, do all that kind of stuff, FOI people do. I'll be a soldier, I'll be at the mouse every day. 12 years, I never missed a meeting. 12 years straight. Even even, even when I was working uh, on the bus, driving the Greyhound bus, and even when I got uh, the job being a traveling salesman, I would always make a range to be in a place where there's a, where there's a mosque. <laughs> so I'd go to Med Tech. So, and I, and I was always almost, almost 12, 11, 12 years. I, I can't remember what day there was a place I was in the city, there was a mosque meeting, and I wasn't there. <laughs> but mostly it was in San Francisco. Because in San Francisco, when the mosque started, you have the mosque in San Francisco and one in Oakland. Okay. So they, they weren't really structured, 26 and 26 B at that time. It was just months. So uh, the real was old, both of them. Another brother came out there and he was old. So from the eventually, they all got their numbers, got their numbers. But when I came in, when I went back to California, when I first came in, it was, the mass was seven days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we were in, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, we were in one city. And set, uh, no, one, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we were in one city. Tuesday, Thursday, 